Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Continuing with our discussion on the conditions for incompressibility, we have seen that the requirement We show that the flow can be treated as incompressible or the velocity field can be treated as solenoidal if we have these two requirements that 1 by rho c square dp dt much less than u infinity by L and which we saw that will be satisfied if m square is much less than 1 n square l square by c square much less than 1 and assuming that the body force is only gravitational force that these three conditions together will give satisfy this condition. Also we had another requirement which says that what it was 1 by rho c square d p d a set constant rho into d s d t. This also must be much less than u infinity by L. <laughs> so, we will now see what of course, as you will see that these are not very important, but just let us complete. <laughs> we can write that 1 by rho c square d p d s rho is equal to minus 1 by rho c square I hope you remember this relation. This is a thermodynamical identity, the product of three partial derivatives <laughs> and this
this C square gets cancelled here. This dp d rho at constant entropy that is what is C square. So, this C square gets cancelled and this d rho d s is written like this d rho d t by d s d t. this is written as beta t by C p, or this C p is specific heat at constant pressure, these are all thermodynamical relations and beta is <coughs> conductivity. So, this is <coughs> what this term can be written and then the remaining term what it was into d s d t that d s d t if you look back to your energy equation from energy equation d s d t can be written as 1 by t into that phi mechanical dissipation ok plus 1 by rho d d x i of k this is obtained from energy equation. <coughs> so, this multiplied by this this will this means this into this You can look back to the definition of this phi, which is the dissipation, dissipation of energy per unit mass or per unit volume depending upon which form you are taking. And from that you can find out what will be the order of this dissipation. If you remember it was mu into I think you can look back to your notes and see that phi was described as mu into E i j minus one third divergence of u into E i j minus one third of divergence delta i j. Okay. <laughs> anyway, the phi is proportional to mu into E i j the strain rate. So, you can see what will be the order of this phi. What will be the order of that phi? So, here there are two terms. So, if this has to be less than u infinity by L, each of them has to be less than u infinity by L. This beta by C p into phi and beta by C p into this quantity that has to be phi. And this leads beta u infinity square by 
cp to mu y The standard magnitude of these, say if it is if the fluid is water, then these will have the general value is of the order of 10 to the power minus 10 or even smaller. So, you see that they are almost invariably satisfied, now it is very rare case when these are not satisfied. The very rare case when these conditions are not satisfied. So, even when the flow is not really incompressible, the full flow is fully compressible, still these conditions are satisfied. Both these quantities are always very small. So, these two conditions are almost invariably There it is stated that this condition for incompressibility will be violated if you are interested on your length scale and velocity product of this u infinity l is less than even 0 0.1 product of u infinity l is less than even 0 0.1 and you are considering a very high temperature flow in that situation this is this will be violated. But see, those are hardly any practical case, at least for us. So, we will never encounter any situation where these two conditions will be violated. So, based on these two conditions, rather we will be able to say that all flows are incompressible. However, we have seen that there are three more conditions. So, out of these five conditions, we now have five conditions the three coming from the dp dt term and two coming from this, this term out of these five conditions, these two are almost invariably satisfied. The condition related to body force G L by C square that is also almost invariably satisfied as you have seen that when you are interested to in the scale of the atmosphere itself only then that term will be important. We would not be able to consider the flow incompressible if we are considering the whole atmosphere, but if we are interested only a small portion of the atmosphere that term will never oppose us in our approximation of incompressible flow. So, since these three conditions are almost invariably satisfied, what remains are basically the other two conditions that m square much less than 1 and n square l square by c square is much less than 1. And in case the flow is almost steady or nearly steady or fully steady then that condition n square l square by c square is also not important. So, for steady flow the only important condition is that Mach number is small square of Mach number is much less than 1. So, for steady flow the only important condition that is required for the flow to be treated as incompressible is that the square of Mach number is much less than 1. But Okay, it never gives much less than 1 means how much. It never say clearly that okay, this uh, square of the Mach number should be less than 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or 0 0.5 nothing. But since it says that the, if the square of Mach number is le much less than 1, then the flow can be approximated incompressible. Meaning as, 
as your square of Mach number becomes smaller and smaller, your approximation will be better and better. So, if the square of Mach number is a 0 0.1, your approximation of incompressible flow will be better than if it were at say 0 0.4. If m square is 0 0.4 and you are using an incompressible flow and for m square is 0 0.1 and you are using incompressible flow, it is expected that when the m square is 0 0.1, your approximation is better, your solution is more accurate. But it never specifies that m square has to be this much, it says m square is much less than 1. So, much less than 1 is of course your interpretation. There is of course a standard thumb rule. It often says that if Mach number is less than 0 0.3, Mach number is less than 0 0.3, then the flow is approximately incompressible. And given that in most cases, if your Mach number is uh, of the order of 0 0.3, the pressure change involved in that situation is at the most of about 5 to 10 percent of the absolute pressure. Mach number 0.3 say in case of air is approximately a speed of nearly nearly 100 meter per second, a flow speed of nearly 100 per second of Mach number of 0.3 is. So, <laughs> if you want to have a flow at Mach number 100, the pressure difference that you really need is of the order of 5 to 10 percent of the atmospheric pressure or absolute pressure. So, that is a very small change. So, when the flow Mach number is 0.3, this is taken as a thumb rule, but do not take it for granted that in all situation, if Mach number is about 0.3, the flow will be very good approximation for incompressible flow, not necessarily. There are many situations, even when at Mach 0.3, the flow is quite compressible. Particularly, if you remember, we talked about, I think, in the very beginning about high speed flow, high lift devices that during landing and take up the aircraft leading edge and the trailing edge can be deflected with respect to the remaining part of the wing if you remember which are called high lift devices to produce high lift during time of take off and landing. And with those high lift devices deflected a flow at Mach 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 is highly compressible, not incompressible. So, even though it is taken at Mach number 0 0.3 as a thumb rule for incompressible flow, limit for incompressible flow, but do not take it to be gospel. Okay. This is this depends on situation to situation. <coughs> okay, now, let us see then summarize we have first of all seen that if the flow Reynolds number is very high, then the viscous term in the governing equation can be neglected or at best it can be neglected for the most part of the flow except a very thin region near the body, except that everywhere else the viscous forces can be neglected. And we have also seen that if the viscous forces are absent, then the circulation around a closed material curve remain independent and if the circulation was initially 0, it remains 0. And <coughs> when these viscous effects are absent, any vorticity that is produced that is also confined within that thin narrow region near the body, outside that region there will be no vorticity. In other way, when the flow is at very high Reynolds number, we can approximate the flow to be inviscid as well as irrotational, except a very thin region near the body surface, which we call the boundary layer and outside this, outside this boundary layer, the flow field is inviscid irrotational. So, at high Reynolds number, the flow can be approximated to be inviscid and irrotational. We can forget about that boundary layer, a small part, 
or whatever solution we obtain we can call that this is the solution outside the boundary layer either way either we completely forget about the boundary layer or we say okay, the solution that you are obtaining it is valid outside the boundary layer. Also we find that there are certain conditions where the flow of a compressible fluid can be considered as incompressible flow and out of that in particular if the flow is steady flow then the only important condition is the Mach number is small. Mach number is small. So, if the Mach number is approaching to 0 and Reynolds number is approaching to infinity, then we can consider the flow to be inviscid, incompressible, irrotational. In the limiting case of Mach number approaching to 0 and Reynolds number approaching to infinity, the flow can be considered as <coughs> inviscid, incompressible, irrotational. Let us summarize that most important condition for steady incompressible flow These flows are of course called ideal flows. <coughs> By the way, what we mean that Mach number approaching to 0, do not take it this way that the velocity is approaching to 0, no. See the Mach number is a ratio u by a, where is the speed of sound. Okay. So, when can it become 0? If a approaches infinity or u approaches 0. So, here when we say that the Mach number is 0, we never take it or think it this way that u is 0 or u is approaching to 0, it is the other way, a is approaching to infinity, which is actually the case. See what is d p 0, speed of sound d p 0, that is square of the speed of sound. So, in, in, in an incompressible flow, where density is independent of pressure, what is d p 0? is infinite. There is no change in density due to change in pressure. That is by definition an incompressible flow. No change in density due to change in pressure. So, what then d p 0 is infinite. So, the speed of sound is infinite. What is the meaning of that? The speed of sound is infinite in an incompressible fluid. you speak here, anyone at infinite distance will listen instantaneously, would not even take some time. 
Uh, what is speaking? You are disturbing the air. When you speak, you disturb the air. Of course, the disturbance can be done by many things. Even this is also a disturbance. Okay. If a body moves through it, a ball travels to air, that is also disturbing the air. So, any disturbance it will reach infinite instantaneously. That is what it is when the speed of speed of propagation becomes infinite, then information reaches instantaneously. <coughs> so, in an incompressible fluid or incompressible flow any disturbance will reach everywhere instantaneously, because the speed of information propagation that is what is the speed of sound. Okay. Speed of sound is a wave it carries the information. So, the speed of information propagation is infinite and consequently any disturbance will reach infinite distance instantaneously would not take any time. However, if the fluid is not incompressible that is if d p d rho is not infinite then it will take some time it may reach it may not reach what it actually happens. <coughs> anyway we are not much interested at this stage in that part of the flow. <coughs> so, we have seen that under what condition we can approximate the flow to be inviscid, incompressible, irrotational which is ideal flow. And we know already that if the flow is irrotational, if the flow field is irrotational that is curl of u is 0 or irrotational flow field irrotational flow field means that curl of u is 0. And what does it mean that u is gradient of phi? This phi is velocity potential. Please, sometime we are using phi as dissipation and sometime we are using as velocity potential, but I think the context, if you look to the context, it will be clear. If you are talking energy equation, only then we are using phi as potential, I mean dissipation, otherwise phi is potential. <coughs> And you see that simplification instead of the three component of the velocity vector, we need only one scalar function of position, position of time of course in general. <laughs> so, instead of three unknowns we now have only one unknown phi, once that phi is known the three component of velocity are known from this relation nothing else. And remember in this case earlier also we considered irrotational flow, but in that time we consider the irrotational flow as part of contribution. There are three contribution we talked talk, talked about one isotopic expansion, one rigid body rotation and one no expansion no rotation, but that is only one contribution, but in this case it is no longer only one part of the contribution to the velocity. In this case this is the complete velocity this is the complete velocity there is no isotropic expansion or no rigid body rotation associated with it. The entire velocity field is irrotational. So, this is what we get from this and <coughs> oh, irrotational that is why these ideal flows are also called potential flows. Earlier, when we discussed about it, the flow was not potential, only one component or part of the flow was potential, but there are other parts also. But now we do not have, we have only potential part. And that incompressibility is 
implies that velocity field is solenoidal or divergence free. The velocity field is solenoidal or divergence free, no rate of expansion, no expansion. And if we substitute it here, sorry, divergence gradient of phi. divergence gradient is Laplacian. A partial differential equation to find phi. So, this alone is sufficient to find phi, we do not need anything else. So, this replaces the entire set of governing equations and this becomes the governing equation for ideal flow or potential flows. Once we find the solution for phi, we can find the velocity field. The conservation equations, post the conservation equations are here within it, but we do not need the conservation equations separately. This alone will give us everything. Once we find the velocity field, okay, we need to find pressure which can be obtained by satisfying the integral form of the momentum equation that is the so called Bernoulli's equation. Okay. So, once u is obtained from phi. and the solution is complete. This governing equation is linear. So, you see that the simplification that we are looking for that simplification is obtained. We said the region of the region to region of difficulty of the solution of the Navier-Stokes equations or Euler's equation is the inherent nonlinearity of the equations. Euler's equation or Navier-Stokes equations are nonlinear, and in general, it is not possible to find solution for those equations. This equation is linear, so that difficulty is avoided. However, this doesn't mean that we have the problem has become linear because the problem is not only the governing equation. The complete description of the problem needs a governing equation and the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions can still be non-linear or rather in general they are. In general they are, the boundary conditions are also non-linear. So, for a complete solution of course, the boundary conditions also need to be linearized. that of course, we will postpone now, we will talk about this linear equation. This already you have mentioned that there are many solutions for this Laplacian of phi equal to 0 unknown and we talked about some solutions earlier. The solutions are in general called harmonic functions. Laplacian of phi is an elliptic partial differential equation which needs that phi within the domain of description is continuous there cannot be any discontinuity, there cannot be any discrete jump, phi has to be very smooth and continuous function. That is the requirement of all elliptic partial differential equation. All this we have already mentioned, we talked about some solutions also. 
So, all those solutions are now valid and for the entire flow field, they will now give the entire flow field, not a part of the flow field, it will give the complete flow field. <coughs> also, we earlier discussed about different condition, under what condition we can get a unique solution for this problem. We have seen that if it is a singly connected domain, then to get unique solution we must know the boundary condition in the form of either this phi is disc given or specified on the boundary or the normal gradient of phi is specified on the boundary or a combination thereof. In a doubly connected domain we have also seen that to get unique in a doubly connected domain this phi is not a singly connected sorry phi is not a single valued function rather phi is a multi valued function. If it makes a complete turn around an irreducible curve in a doubly connected domain then for every turn its value increases by a cyclic constant. The cyclic constant now we can relate with circulation that every complete turn it makes around an uni around a irreducible curve the value of phi increases by a constant which we call cyclic constant which can be said okay, the same thing as the circulation in a doubly connected domain. And in such a doubly connected domain we saw that in addition to the boundary conditions, the boundary conditions that phi is described on the specified on the boundary or normal gradient of phi specified on the boundaries or a combination thereof is specified on the boundaries. In addition to these boundary condition we also need to know the value of that cyclic constant. Unless we know the value of the cyclic constant we cannot get a unique solution for phi in a doubly connected domain. So, all these of course, now valid for the complete velocity field or complete incompressible flow about any arbitrary body whatever the body is. So, first of all if we need the solution of this ideal flow or potential flow or incompressible inviscid irrotational flow about any body then if the domain outside about any body means we are interested in the flow outside the body, the flow is outside the body and the domain of the flow is then we can say are in an infinite domain <coughs> flow about an aircraft or say aircraft wing is what it is flow that is over the aircraft not within the aircraft and then there is no nothing else in the boundary the other boundary is at infinity. So, in this case the boundary is at one boundary is at infinity and one on the body surface. If this is a singly connected domain of course, it is in this case then we can obtain the solution unique solution if we know the boundary conditions either in terms of phi known on the surface of the aircraft as well as at infinity and or the normal gradient of phi known on the surface of the boundary surface of the aircraft as well as on the infinity. However, if instead of a complete aircraft we have only a single airfoil a cross section of the wing which actually means a wing of infinite length then the domain is two dimensional then the domain is two dimensional and sorry uh, uh, do domain is doubly connected. This I think we discussed earlier ok we will uh, talk once again and then in addition to the boundary condition that is either the potential at infinity and on the earth wing surface or the normal gradient of potential on the wing surface is required in addition we need to know that cyclic constant otherwise we cannot get a unique solution. See in a two dimensional wing if we consider a two dimensional wing the wing is infinitely long. Now, think about any curve which loops this wing can you reduce it to point without going out of the domain 
you cannot. But think about the complete aircraft, any car that loops the aircraft can very easily be reduced to or shrunk to a point without ever going out of the domain. Think how it is possible. This time you think, last time I told, so this time you should tell me. We think a car which is looping the aircraft. Now, going out of the domain, the domain is the surface of the aircraft, the complete surface of the aircraft and think about a sphere of infinite radius. Within that, that is our domain, we cannot, you cannot go out of it. So, that means, if, if you go inside the aircraft, you are going out of the domain. It is very easy, slide the carb, take it out of the aircraft. In that process, if you think okay, my carb was not as big as the aircraft, huh? then you stretch it, make it longer, make it bigger and then go out of the aircraft. Once you go out of the aircraft, you just shrink it. The aircraft only a small portion of the complete that infinite sphere. No? How can you? This wing is infinitely long, how can you go out any wing, any car which is uh, looping it, how can you go out of it, which side? Then you have to go through the wing, but within the wing, the inner part of the wing is also out of the domain. However, so this problem for Laplace and phi already there are many known solutions. However, remember that even though the equation is quite simple linear equation and let us say for a given situation the boundary condition is also not that complex, but still in general you will not get a direct solution. it is usually not possible to get a direct solution. The usual practice is, it is not that, that you are given the equation and given the boundary condition then you are doing something and then finding the solution, that is in general not possible. In some cases of course, it is possible, find what is the solution of Laplacian phi and then satisfy the boundary condition and go, it is rather other way. Take some solution of phi phi has many solutions known, we discussed like say that 1 by r and all they are all solution of this Laplacian phi equal to 0 of the Laplace equation. Take some of this solution because the equation is linear, so solution of sum of the two solutions is also a solution. Then just consider a certain combination and then try to satisfy the boundary condition there. Say as an example, let us say that phi 1 is one solution, phi 2 is another solution, phi 3 is another solution. So, you can construct a solution which is, which is a 1 phi 1 plus a 2 phi 2 plus a 3 phi 3 and so on and then you try to satisfy your boundary condition and try to get the values of a 1, a 2, a 3. That is the usual approach of solving this Laplacian equation. Of course, we will solve few cases and we will see how we are uh, getting some flow before we try to solve flow about an uh, airfoil or wing or aircraft. We know that 1 by r phi equal to 1 by r gives a solution due to source. Remember we said that is a distribution of rate of expansion with singularity at the point of the source. That is, if we distribute a rate of expansion everywhere 0, but at one point it is almost infinite, that is what is a point source equivalent to. 
Now your first question will come. Let us see if we distribute rate of expansion, but this is incompressible flow, there is no rate of expansion. How can we have even at uh, rate of expansion even at one point? It is not possible. So, how can we use source? Yes, we can. Put the source inside the aircraft or inside that body, no problem. Because inside the body is not part of the flow. So, even if there is a you imagine there is a source or there is an infinite rate of expansion, it hardly affects the flow. There is no expansion as far as the flow field is concerned. Similarly, if we need to consider a vorticity, here also you can put the vorticity with the understanding that this vorticity will inherently be within the body. So, that actually there is no rotation is created within the body, within the flow. A point vortex is what? An infinite amount of rotation at that point. Outside that point there is no rotation, but it produces a circular type of velocity field, circular streamlines. We found that gamma by 2 pi r become the velocity field for an infinite line vortex, a point vortex in two dimension is equally a, actually an infinite line vortex. So, an infinite line vortex gives velocity at a distance r from that line vortex of the amount of gamma by 2 pi r, where gamma is the circulation about that line vortex. But no rotation, the rotation is or the vorticity is confined to that line or to that point only. Now, if we can make it this way that the point is no longer within the flow field, it is there, but it is not within the flow field, then the flow is not rotational, there is no vorticity in it, but the effect of vorticity is still there. There is no rigid body rotation, there is no vorticity in it, but that a velocity field, tangential velocity field that is present. <coughs> so, that is the way we can use those solutions once again to obtain the solution of now for complete flow field. those will uh, decide, those will decide, we will see how we are how we are deciding depending upon it. Try it this way, what is the what would be the potential function for a uniform flow in the x direction. What would be the potential function? for a uniform stream along x direction, straightforward u infinity x. Okay. The potential function for a uniform flow in the x direction is u infinity x or other way u infinity x represents a uniform flow in the x direction. Okay. Consider another point source consider another point source. For simplicity, let us consider it is two dimensional. Instead of three dimension, let us consider it two dimension and a two dimensional point source of course, is equi equivalent to an infinite line source in the third direction. So, if we consider our two dimension is the x and y dimension, then a point source is an infinite line in the z direction but in the cross section of course, we are seeing only one point. Let us say at the origin of that axis system we have a point source. Okay. At the origin we have a point source of strength earlier we are um, taking the strength of the point source as m. So, let us take once again as m and what is the potential due to a point source if you remember? 
for a two dimensional point source we did it earlier. Point source for a two dimensional sorry potential function for a two dimensional point source. What is the potential function for a two dimensional point source or perhaps we have mentioned there as a line source infinite line source. Yes. One by, R. one by R is actually for three dimension or a three dimensional point source or a genuine point source is one by R rather m by four pi R. Okay. For two dimensional case. Infinite line m by 2 pi log r hmm? now m by 2 pi log r is a solution of two dimensional laplacian equation two dimensional laplacian equation u infinity x is also a solution of two dimensional laplacian equation sum of the two will then be a solution of this laplace equation because the laplace equation is a linear equation so we can superimpose solution u infinity x is a solution m by 2 pi log r is also another solution we combine the two solution combine and then see what it is please do it find out the velocity field find the velocity field u infinity x and m by 2 pi log r Better still write the stream function, write the stream function What is psi? The stream function? Hmm? U infinity? U infinity? What 
what is psi for this at that uh, uniform flow along x? Hmm? Stream function for uniform flow along x. u infinity y the stream function for uniform stream along x uh, along x is u infinity y see some of these things are uh, is better to remember every day of course you can get all these by starting from the definitions that u equal to d phi dx equal to d psi dy using that definition of phi and psi you can find phi and psi all right, but for some of these basic solutions it is easier to remember instead of trying to derive every time and when it is so easy to remember. Potential function for stream uniform stream along x is u infinity x stream function for uniform stream along y is u infinity y. And for point source in two dimension, okay. Can you say what will be the streamlines for a point source? Streamlines for a point source. Point source streamlines are circular. radial just rays then what will be the stream function you know a constant stream function represent a streamline that also we have done earlier psi equal to constant represents a streamline so what will be the stream function or the streamlines are just radial lines. What are the equation of radial lines? Think r theta coordinate system. What are the equation for radial lines? All radial lines are theta equal to constant one radius is given by one particular value of theta. So, the stream function will contain only theta and okay, that m by 2 pi. Then of course, there is a question of sign whether plus or minus. So, what we have taken you should be consistent that is all. use any sign consistently. <coughs> anyway, we will continue it next time. <coughs>